Prince Frederick, Duke of York and Albany, Frederick Augustus, the 16th of August 1763 to the 5th of January 1827, was the second son of George III, King of the United Kingdom and Hanover, and his consort Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Strelitz. A soldier by profession, from 1764 to 1803, he was Prince Bishop of Osnabrück in the Holy Roman Empire. From the death of his father in 1820 until his own death in 1827 he was the heir presumptive to his elder brother, George IV, in both the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and the Kingdom of Hanover. Frederick was thrust into the British Army at a very early age and was appointed to high command at the age of 30, when he was given command of a notoriously ineffectual campaign during the War of the First Coalition, a continental war following the French Revolution. Later, as commander-in-chief during the Napoleonic Wars, he oversaw the reorganization of the British Army, establishing vital structural, administrative and recruiting reforms for which he is credited with having done more for the army than any one man has done for it in the whole of its history. <laughs> Early life Prince Frederick Augustus, or the Duke of York as he became in later life, belonged to the House of Hanover. He was born on 16 August 1763, at St. James's Palace, London. His father was the reigning British monarch, King George III. His mother was Queen Charlotte nay Princess of Mecklenburg-Strelitz. He was christened on 14 September 1763 at St. James's, by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Secker. His godparents were his great uncle the Duke of Saxe Gotha Altenburg for whom the Earl Gower, Lord Chamberlain, stood proxy, his uncle the Duke of York for whom the Earl of Huntingdon, groom of the stool, stood proxy, and his great aunt the Princess Amelia. On the 27th of February 1764, when Prince Frederick was 6 months old, he became Prince Bishop of Osnabrück upon the death of Clemens August of Bavaria. The Peace of Westphalia stipulated that the city of Osnabrück would alternate between Catholic and Protestant rulers, with the Protestant bishops to be elected from the cadets of the House of Brunswick-Luneburg. The bishopric of Osnabrück came with a substantial income, which he retained until the city was incorporated into Hanover in 1803 during the German mediatization. He was invested as Knight of the Most Honorable Order of the Bath on 30 December 1767 and as a Knight of the Order of the Garter on 19 June 1771. <laughs> <laughs> Military career George III decided that his second son would pursue an army career and had him gazetted colonel on 4 November 1780. From 1781 to 1787, Prince Frederick lived in Hanover, where he studied along with his younger brothers, Prince Edward, Prince Ernest, Prince Augustus and Prince Adolphus at the University of Göttingen. He was appointed Colonel of the Second Horse Grenadier Guards now Second Life Guards on 26 March 1782 before being promoted to Major General on 20 November 1782. Promoted to Lieutenant General on 27 October 1784, he was appointed Colonel of the Coldstream Guards on 28 October 1784. He was created Duke of York and Albany and Earl of Ulster on 27 November 1784 and became a member of the Privy Council. On his return to Great Britain, the Duke took his seat in the House of Lords, where, on 15 December 1788 during the Regency Crisis, he opposed William Pitt's Regency Bill in a speech which was supposed to have been influenced by the Prince of Wales. On 26 May 1789 he took part in a duel with Colonel Charles Lennox, who had insulted him, Lennox missed, and Prince Frederick refused to return fire. Flanders On 12 April 1793 Frederick was promoted to full general. That year, he was sent to Flanders in command of the British contingent of Coburg's army destined for the invasion of France. Frederick and his command fought in the Flanders campaign under extremely trying conditions. He won several notable engagements, such as the Siege of Valenciennes in July 1793, but was defeated at the Battle of Honshut in September 1793. In the 1794 campaign he gained a notable success at the Battle of Beaumont in April and another at the Battle of Willems in May but was defeated at the Battle of Torcoing later that month. The British army was evacuated through Bremen in April 1795.
Topic: <laughs> Commander in Chief. After his return to Britain, his father George III promoted him to the rank of Field Marshal on the 18th of February 1795. On 3 April 1795, George appointed him effective commander-in-chief in succession to Lord Amherst although the title was not confirmed until three years later. He was also colonel of the 60th Regiment of Foot from 19 August 1797. On appointment as commander-in-chief he immediately declared, reflecting on the Flanders Campaign of 1793–94, that no officer should ever be subject to the same disadvantages under which he had laboured. His second field command was with the army sent for the Anglo-Russian invasion of Holland in August 1799. On 7 September 1799, he was given the honorary title of Captain General. Sir Ralph Abercrombie and Admiral Sir Charles Mitchell, in charge of the vanguard, had succeeded in capturing some Dutch warships in Den Elder. However, following the Duke's arrival with the main body of the army, a number of disasters befell the Allied forces, including shortage of supplies. On 17 October 1799, the Duke signed the Convention of Alkmaar, by which the Allied expedition withdrew after giving up its prisoners. 1799 also saw Fort Frederick in South Africa named after him. Frederick's military setbacks of 1799 were inevitable given his lack of moral seniority as a field commander, the poor state of the British army at the time, and conflicting military objectives of the protagonists. After this ineffectual campaign, Frederick was mocked, perhaps unfairly, in the rhyme, The Grand Old Duke of York. Frederick's experience in the Dutch campaign made a strong impression on him. That campaign, and the Flanders campaign, had demonstrated the numerous weaknesses of the British army after years of neglect. Frederick as commander-in-chief of the British army carried through a massive program of reform. He was the person most responsible for the reforms that created the force which served in the Peninsular War. He was also in charge of the preparations against Napoleon's planned invasion of the United Kingdom in 1803. In the opinion of Sir John Fortescue, Frederick did more for the army than any one man has done for it in the whole of its history. In 1801 Frederick actively supported the foundation of the Royal Military College, Sandhurst, which promoted the professional, merit-based training of future commissioned officers. On 14 September 1805 he was given the honorary title of Warden of Windsor Forest. Frederick resigned as Commander-in-Chief on 25 March 1809, as the result of a scandal caused by the activities of his latest mistress, Mary Ann Clark. Clark was accused of illicitly selling army commissions under Frederick's aegis. A select committee of the House of Commons inquired into the matter. Parliament eventually acquitted Frederick of receiving bribes by 278 votes to 196. He nevertheless resigned because of the high tally against him. Two years later, it was revealed that Clark had received payment for furniture from Frederick's disgraced chief accuser, Gwilym Wardle, and the Prince Regent reappointed the exonerated Frederick as commander in chief on 29 May 1811. Frederick maintained a country residence at Oatlands near Weybridge, Surrey, but he was seldom there, preferring to immerse himself in his administrative work at Horse Guards, the British Army's headquarters, and, after hours, in London's high life, with its gaming tables. Frederick was perpetually in debt because of his excessive gambling gambling on cards and racehorses. Following the unexpected death of his niece, Princess Charlotte of Wales, in 1817, Frederick became second in line to the throne, with a serious chance of inheriting it. In 1820, he became heir presumptive with the death of his father, George III. <laughs> death Frederick died of dropsy and apparent cardiovascular disease at the home of the Duke of Rutland on Arlington Street, London, in 1827. After lying in state in London, Frederick's remains were interred in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Family On 29 September 1791 at Charlottenburg, Berlin, and again on 23 November 1791 at Buckingham Palace, Frederick married his cousin Princess Frederica Charlotte of Prussia, the daughter of King Frederick William II of Prussia and Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick-Luneburg. The marriage was not a happy one and the couple soon separated. Frederica retired to Oatlands, where she lived until her death in 1820. Uh, 
Topic: Titles, Styles, and Honors. Topic: Titles and Styles. The 16th of August 1763 to the 27th of November 1784, His Royal Highness the Prince Frederick. The 27th of November 1784 to the 5th of January 1827, His Royal Highness the Duke of York and Albany his full style recited at his funeral was Most High, Most Mighty, and Illustrious Prince Frederick Duke of York and of Albany, Earl of Ulster, Knight of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, First and Principal Knight Grand Cross of the Most Honorable Military Order of the Bath, Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Hanoverian Guelphic Order. Topic: Honors. His honors were as follows: Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the Bath (GCB), Royal Knight of the Order of the Garter (KG), Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Guelphic Order (GCH), Knight of the Order of the Saint Esprit of France, the 21st of April 1814, Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Charles III of Spain, the 10th of November 1814. Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Maria Theresa of Austria 1814. Legacy Fredericton, the capital of the Canadian province of New Brunswick, was named after Prince Frederick. The city was originally named, Frederickstown. Also in Canada, Duke of York Bay was named in his honour, since it was discovered on his birthday, 16 August. In Western Australia, York County and the towns of York and Albany were named after Prince Frederick. Albany was originally named Frederick Town. The towering Duke of York Column on Waterloo Place, just off the Mall, London was completed in 1834 as a memorial to Prince Frederick. The 72nd Regiment of Foot was given the title Duke of Albany's Own Highlanders in 1823 and, in 1881, became 1st Battalion Seaforth Highlanders Ross Shire Buffs, the Duke of Albany's, the first British fortification in southern Africa. Fort Frederick, Port Elizabeth, a city in the eastern Cape province of South Africa, was built in 1799 to prevent French assistance for rebellious Boers in the short-lived Republic of Graf Reinet. Topic: Ancestors. Topic: See also. Beer money, a notable military allowance of the time. List of famous duels. Topic. References and notes Topic Sources Cocaine, G. E. 2000. The Complete Peerage of England, Scotland, Ireland, Great Britain and the United Kingdom, Extant, Extinct or Dormant, New Ed., 13 Volumes in 14 1910-1959, Volume 12, 2. Alan Sutton Publishing. Fox Davies, Arthur 1909. A Complete Guide to Heraldry. London. Retrieved 4 April 2008. Glover, Richard 1973. Britain at Bay, Defence Against Bonaparte, 1803-14, Historical Problems, Studies and Documents Series No. 20. George Allen and Onwin Ltd., London. Glover, Richard 1963. Peninsular Preparation, The Reform of the British Army 1795-1809. Cambridge University Press. Hethcote, Tony 1999. The British Field Marshals 1736-1997. Pen and Sword Books Limited. ISBN 0-85052-696-5. OP.I OP, and OP.P. 1997. The Oxford Dictionary of Nursery Rhymes. Oxford University Press, 1951, 2nd edn. Taylor, Isaac 1898. Names and Their Histories, A Handbook of Historical Geography. Rivingtons, London. OCLC 4161840. Retrieved 4 April 2008. Weir, Allison Britain's Royal Family, A Complete Genealogy. The Bodley Head, London. McNaughton, C. Arnold The Book of Kings, A Royal Genealogy. Garnstone Press. 
Luda, Yeary and McLagan, Michael 1999. Lines of Succession, Heraldry of the Royal Families of Europe, Second Edition. Little, Brown and Company. Topic. Further reading Byrne, Alfred 1949. The Noble Duke of York, The Military Life of Frederick Duke of York and Albany. Staples Press, London. Perry, William Edward 1844. Three Voyages for the Discovery of a Northwest Passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific, a Narrative of an Attempt to Reach the North Pole. Project Gutenberg. pp. Second Voyage, Chapter 2. Archived from the original on 15 September 2011. Retrieved 4 April 2008.